Hello, Bridget here at Rooted Sky Homestead and today we are making dead nettle pesto. All right, so as you can see, I have a very happy, abundant population here that's actually growing out above the, it's going over the driveway by a good four inches. So this is a really nice patch to harvest and before I harvest anything that's growing um, in our bioregion and if it's growing where we live or if it's growing at a park or some other um, advantageous place, I always like to check in with the plants first to see if they would be willing to be ingested. Do they want to be harvested? Um, this population actually grew here and I've been foraging them now. Um, since the beginning of spring, like when they first popped up and they're just really, really anxious and happy to be uh, foraged. So let's get started. I am going to be trimming the plants. You can see these stems here. So the leaves are here and then there's still a pretty hardy stalk. I'm actually gonna go all the way down to the stem. And I brought my scissors because I don't wanna break them. There we go. So I'm gonna actually go for the entire plant here. And I will be using all of this in the pesto. This will, these stems will get ground down really nicely. All right, so now that we're inside, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking the leaves off of the stems because ideally I um, will chop up all the stems and it'll help the food processor to break them down a little bit more uh, consistently. I also wanted to say that the flowers of the dead nettle each one of these flowers can be harvested and put into a jar to tincture, which means that you're using some form of alcohol to um, cure these over probably six to eight weeks. And I'm really trying to decide. I think I'm going to take some of these flowers. We do have a very hardy population of dead nettle growing around here right now. Um, so I, I don't feel too bad about taking these flowers from the early pollinators. We do have them all around the homestead, front yard and back. Okay, I'm just gonna keep looking these down. As I'm sitting here processing these, I was thinking about um, the movie John Wick. I don't know if any of you have seen John Wick 4, but we went this past weekend. And, you know, true story, three movies later, and I finally realized <laughs> that John Wick is uh, symbolic of Baba Yaga. I mean, they even called him Baba Yaga. I think it was in the second one, first or second one. And I, it just went right over my head. However, I'm thinking about the fourth movie, and there is this one scene, and I'm not going to give spoilers, but basically one of the actors said to Keanu Reeves, friendship means little when it's convenient, and that's what I'm thinking about while I'm trying to pick these little teeny, teeny, teeny flowers. Look how tiny those are. 
to make a tincture, but you know what? The medicines that are in here are so vital and important that it's worth taking the time to pull one flower out after the next, knowing that as it sits in the curing agent, it's extracting all of these properties that are inside of these teeny tiny little flowers. The pollinators know how important the medicine is in here, and I'm now becoming aware of it. We're just going to keep working away. Park it in there. We're halfway there. Look at all those petals. Aren't these flowers beautiful? They're so tiny, but they're really pretty in numbers. All right, mission accomplished. So we have four cups of fresh greens here de-stemmed, de-flowered, and now I am just uh, going to let them sit in the water for a little bit. These are really close to the ground, okay? So I like to um, help any of the ants get out of there. It's also, it was near a pea zone, so I want to make sure that, you know, there's just no sediment and no ickies on our greens that are fresh and beautiful and delicious and oh so nutritious. Oh, I see a flower I missed here. Another thing about foraging is that you want to do it on a dry day because no matter how you're utilizing the items, you don't want, you know, if you're going to make um, a tincture or if you're going to do any type of oil infusion, honey infusion, the plant material that you're using needs to be dry or else mold will occur. Um, also, you know, dew and uh, time of day, it does change the, um, not so much the flavor, but, you know, the quality, I guess is what I would want to say. It changes the quality. So we're going to let these soak for a minute, and then I'm going to get moving with making our pesto. All right, we're back, and here we are, final stages of pesto. So we have, we're going to use a half a cup of really high quality um, extra virgin olive oil. This is unfiltered extra virgin olive oil. I have some soaked cashews here. It's a third of a cup of cashews, uh, three quarters of a cup of the... Um, Parmesan cheese, two tablespoons of lemon juice. I also have uh, fermented garlic cloves here and three cups of our dead nettle leaves. So let's get started. recipe called for five cloves. I'm using nine. We really are big fans of garlic here. Now I am also going to add in a little bit of minced onion that was not in the recipe, but I like it in pesto. Kind of has a shallot-y, like shallot flavor. It's very mild onion. Okay, and here's all these beautiful dead nettles. Let's give this one whir and see what we're at. It smells really good. We're getting there. I'm going to add a little bit more oil and the rest of the leaves. This is a little food processor that I have with my Cuisinart um, immersion blender. Works pretty well. Can't complain, it makes small batches. Pretty simple. All right, let's keep uh, grinding this up. All right, so after the first taste, here's where we're at. It needs more lemon, so I just added another tablespoon of lemon. And I also added salt. The recipe did not call for salt, um, the nuts that I'm using, these cashews are unsalted, 
and I just feel like the recipe really needed a little dash of salt. So I would suggest doing a taste test and see how it looks, you know, how it tastes for you. We're gonna finish this up here and give it a final, final taste. All right, here we are, final product. Now, if I were giving a review about this um, Cuisinart immersion blender combo, I would give this a five out of five stars. It did an excellent job for about four cups worth of material. Mmm, it's so good. It's very subtle. Some greens have more of a punch. These are very delicate. That's why I chose to go with cashews because I feel like cashews are kind of a mild nut and I soaked them to make them even milder. Mm, this is going to be delicious tonight with dinner, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, wherever you are, I hope that you're doing well. See you next time.